One of the physical properties of a pure organic solid is its melting point. And we're going to demonstrate how we take a melting point. The apparatus that we're going to use is called a melt temp. Now, this is an older version of the melt temp. And it's constructed with a variac, you see that right here, and a heated aluminum block, which has a place for a thermometer, the samples, and a magnifying glass to see what happens as the solid starts to melt. There's also a lamp here which illuminates the sample. Now there's a newer version of the melt temp. And the only difference between it and the older version is this shield. Because the uh, aluminum block gets very, very hot, and so does the lamp. And so in order to avoid getting burned, the manufacturer has constructed the shield around the place where the melting point actually occurs. But we're not going to use this one, although we do have it in the laboratory. We're going to use the older version. The first thing we have to do is to get a sample. The sample that I'm going to take a melting point of is the compound fluorinone. Now, fluorinone is a naturally yellow material. And we chose this so that we could see when the melting uh, point phenomenon actually occurs in the sample tube, which we're going to take the melting point in. What we do is we fill up a, uh, a glass tube, which is sealed at only one end. It has an open end as well, and that's how we're going to get the compound in. And the way we do this is to take the solid, take the open end of the melting point capillary and poke it in there a few times to get about maybe 5 to 10 millimeters length of solid in the tube. observe the solid in the tube. Now the trick is to get that solid from the open end to the closed end. And the way we do that is to simply tap, tap the solid down by hitting the closed end against, a, against the, the desktop, if you will. The solid is now down at the closed end. All right, we're ready to take the melting point now. Plug in our apparatus. And you can tell that the instrument is working because when you uh, turn this on, the the light goes on in there. Okay. We're going to use the thermometer that's supplied with your kit of equipment. And it's going to go into the thermometer section of the heated aluminum block. Now we have to remember that the thermometer fits very, very tightly into the aluminum block. If there is any amount of catch that this thermometer experiences as you push it down in there, do not use it. Withdraw it immediately because this thermometer will get stuck in there and you'll never get it out, believe me. Okay. Now we also want to put into the aluminum block where the sample is being held, right there. Okay. There are two diagrams in your laboratory manual, which I want you to pay attention to, concerning the use of the uh, variac on the melt temp. 
it's important to understand that the setting on the variac is going to determine the maximum temperature as well as the time it takes to get to that maximum temperature in the aluminum block so that we're going to set the variac at a proper rise in temperature versus the amount of time we feel is necessary to get a good melting point of this solid. And that's something that you're going to have to get used to and incorporate into your laboratory procedures. <laughs>